It is my honor and privilege to pronounce you graduate. Four years later and I finally finished high school. Wait, no, let me correct that. Four miserable years later and high school finally finished me and then gave me a fancy paper with my name on it in return, which I appreciate, but they could have at least sewn pockets into my gown. Anyways, that's besides the point. As I reflected on my experiences, I started to realize that experiencing the bad actually helped me learn to appreciate the good. Not to say that my mental breakdowns and seasonal coffee addiction had a positive effect on my character development, but as I navigated these difficulties, I found new passions, made new friends, and took full advantage of the education I was receiving. Since I can't demand a full refund from 2017 to 2021, I decided to compile everything I learned in the past four years and pass my wisdom on to you guys in hopes that you will have a much more enjoyable and meaningful experience. Okay, so y'all are probably confused and wondering like, should I really trust the 17 year old girl who spent the entire introduction of this video just complaining about her high school experience? And I did come off as just very like negative, but as a result of sacrificing my mental health in high school, I was able to learn a lot about how to really make high school an experience that you can enjoy. I also got into some pretty good colleges, even a med school, so I'm going to give you tips on how to succeed without spiraling like I did, so. I still think to myself, like, was it all worth it to like sacrifice my mental health just to get into these colleges? It wasn't worth it, but it's too late to go back in time, so I decided to just make this video and help y'all out so you guys don't have to um, go through the stuff that I went through. But let's get started, let's get started. I'm talking way too much. <laughs> Alright, so starting off with number one, lighten the load on your back and get rid of those heavy organization systems that take up way too much space. Going to school is already mentally draining, so you should try to make it easier for yourself by minimizing any physical stress. Instead of using those three inch binders or multiple heavy notebooks, I recommend using folders. They're lighter and more convenient. Assign a folder for each subject and organize them however you'd like. In my case, I put handwritten notes, study guides, and extra loose leaf on the left, and then classwork, homework, and worksheets on the right i cleaned up my folders every week to take out old classwork and homework and it made me feel so much more cleaner lighter and organized plus whenever the semester ended emptying out all my old work has never been easier <laughs> Number two, it does not matter what other people think of you in high school. I know that high school is a very scary place with really judgy people, but you do not want to have any regrets when you leave. I remember my freshman year like it was yesterday and now I'm going to college. So time flies by super fast. So make the most out of your high school experience. Start that YouTube channel, start that club, try out for that team, or even upload that singing video online. In the end, we all go our separate ways, but you're still going to have that YouTube channel or hobby that you started in high school when you go to college so don't be ashamed of your passions because they are what makes you who you are and coming from someone who has experienced countless of quote-unquote embarrassing moments it's really not that embarrassing unless you make it embarrassing so move with confidence and determination Number three, competitiveness only hurts you in the long run. Now, I'm not a competitive student, but I've been in numerous academically competitive environments. I've met people who lied about their grades, classworks, and homeworks to try and quote unquote, stay ahead of the game. Being competitive does not build character. It is not attractive. It's just not something that I encourage because it just goes to show that you care more about grades than actual relationships or being empathetic and kind. So if your peer needs help with school, help them out. Socializing with your peers and seeing them as your equal rather than your opponent will give you more of an honorable social and academic advantage and you learn more from others than from yourself anyways so it's a win-win situation number four move in silence and stay humble don't go the extra mile to brag or show off your accomplishments this only invites toxic students to compete with you and make your academic life so much more difficult than it already is if you do want to share your achievements share them with the friends that you know will be happy for you or friends that you trust there are people out there who do not want to see you succeed so it's better to be safe than sorry <laughs> Number five, sleep. Pretty ironic to say, considering how I went through my entire high school career literally sleep deprived, 
but that is one of my regrets. I only started valuing my sleep in my junior year. There were multiple things I did to maximize my sleeping times, one of which was using a website called sleepyti.me, a bedtime calculator that helps you find the best time to go to sleep. So the body passes through four to five sleep cycles each night. And if you wake up at the end of the cycle when sleep is the lightest, it'll be so much more easier for you to wake up and start the day without feeling tired. You do not want to wake up in the middle of the cycle when you're in a deep sleep or you'll wake up exhausted and it'll ruin your entire day so before i go to bed i type in the time in which i want to wake up and it'll give me the estimated times i need to sleep so i can wake up rested and refreshed i love this system because even though i only got a few hours of sleep it really felt like i got like the full eight hours because of the whole sleep cycle thing i'm not saying it's healthy but it's a way to cheat the system you know finesse making the most out of your time. If you're always on the go with your extracurriculars, part-time jobs, and internships, you probably have such a small window of time to do your homework or classwork. I would advise to be super smart with your time and get it done anywhere and everywhere. In high school, I did homework and studied on the bus, the train, during my free periods, during elective classes that didn't really matter, and sometimes even during my subject classes after I finished my independent work. This helped me spend more time on extracurriculars and get so much more sleep. Sometimes I would do all my homework throughout the day like on the bus when I'm on the way home and by the time I got home I could just crash and go to bed. Number seven, find a hobby. Grades are not everything and high school is where you should be taking advantage of your teen years. I mean, I'm not saying you should be going crazy, but take up a few hobbies so that you can let off some steam. I took up art and spent my free time at home bullet journaling and collecting stationery. It was really therapeutic and helped me through a lot of my mental breakdowns. If you're not into art, there are so many other hobbies you can do like starting a new sport, getting into fitness, baking, etc, etc. A hobby that I find super beneficial and really easy to learn is crocheting. It's so relaxing and you don't need to be good at anything to create beautiful projects. And you can actually put your creations into good use. I made this super like wonky hat, which is not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good for my first time crocheting. You can make more projects like sweaters, tote bags, shirts, dresses, etc, etc, and even maybe start a business out of it. Those are just some ideas, but yeah, I highly encourage you to find like a side activity. eight get a linkedin i regret not making a linkedin i thought it was for old people to like connect but it turns out that you can really find cool internships and opportunities there even as a high school student so explore the platform apply to high school opportunities or even email professors or internship coordinators put yourself out there push the limits and explore the unknown in my sophomore year i knew nothing about working in museums and when i found the application to apply i decided to give it a go and i'm so glad i did because even though i don't want to go into like museum or like office work it ended up being one of my favorite extracurriculars and taught me so much about independence responsibility and empathy so apply to anything and everything and get a linkedin number nine studying studying is an art that can be very very hard to master each subject requires a different way to study and if you study the wrong way that can have a negative impact on your grade so if you're interested in knowing all my study methods i can make a whole other video for that but for the sake of time i'll tell you guys the most effective one that works almost every single time which is lecturing after you make your study guide go through each topic that your exam will cover and pretend that you're teaching someone everything about that topic usually i just talk to myself out loud but if i really need to visualize the subject i would use a whiteboard and draw everything out and quote unquote teach as if i'm like a teacher in a classroom setting when you can teach all the topics with your own words and without referring to your notes then that's when you know that you're 100 percent prepared for the exam this worked for all my ap biology exams ap u.s history exams etc etc so you should give it a try <laughs> Number 10, communicate with your teachers. I feel like people don't practice this as much as they should because teachers can be a little intimidating, but interacting with them will help you become a better student and get higher grades. If you need help on an assignment or topic, see your teacher after class or during office hours. Trust me, they love when students ask for help and show that they care. Seeing your teachers also gives you a bigger advantage because now they know your skill set at a personal level. This helps them focus a little more on you and your grades. Interacting with your teachers is also great practice for learning how to network and communicate with people older than you. Plus, it'll help in the long run when you need a recommendation 
recommendation for internships and college apps. They also may even have programs or internships to recommend to you, so be on the lookout for those. Number 11, think about the future. While I know that it is so much easier to just relish the present, it's also good to have a vague idea of where you want to be in the future. I was really confused in high school. I had so many interests and didn't know which one was the right one for me until late junior year, but I did know that I wanted to pursue a higher education. So ask yourself a few general questions every once in a while. Do you want to go to college? What are some majors you're interested in? Do you want to stay home or move away after you graduate? Are you going to continue sports in college? If you weren't to go to college, do you have a job to fall back on? Don't stress too much about the future but just keep these things in mind so that when it's actually time to make those big decisions you're not running away in fear this advice seems like it's just so overly calculated but trust me when you're a senior in high school people will be expecting you to know what you want to do in the future i don't think it's fair and i don't think that 17 year olds should be deciding their future at such a young age but that's how the school system works so make sure that you stay ahead of the game <laughs> The key to not losing your mind in high school is consistency. Do something every day that encourages self-care and it'll make you feel more like your life is together. I personally kept my morning super consistent, did my skincare, even though my skincare didn't really work because the stress kind of overpowered the products I was using, it was still really nice to know that you're taking care of yourself in one way or another. Every time I did my skincare routine, I felt like I accomplished something even though it was really small. And sometimes to get going, you really need those small accomplishments. So there you have it, your own high school survival guide. I have so many more advice to share, so let me know if you want a part two, but I really hope that this video helped. I'm convinced that I left a part of myself back in high school since it literally broke me, but I'm on to the next step in my life and hopefully the new memories I create in college are much happier. Anyways, that's all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.